Hello, everybody. I know, I know, it's been far too long. But I do have an explanation. You see, the Archmage, curse him, that foul, vile nemesis of mine, cast a wicked spell upon my spellbook, causing the pages to become all jumbled and scattered and prone to falling out. And I had to spend quite a lot of time and resources getting my spellbook back in order before I could continue on my journey. Or to put it another way, my computer stopped working and I had spent a lot of time and money getting it working again. About two or three weeks. Oof, horrible. Anyway, speaking of the Archmage, Let's use the far spell to scrown him with our crystal ball and see what he's been up to recently. Now I suspect that when I said I am a notoriously slow painter, some of you might not have believed me. Well, here's what I've done so far. I've undercoated the Archmage, and I've done his eyeballs, and yep, I've spilled over onto the face a bit, that doesn't matter, there's going to be skin to cover that up. I've base coated the protrusions of his headdress which look a little bit like horns a little bit like ears and I've also base coated the bones on the base and that's it so far I might do a little bit more today but I'm gonna keep working towards the next episode see you soon so as you can see there a little more painting done and it's time to resume our quest we've come here to the village of the Goatmen, where we spent all our time repairing our spellbook. And we no longer have a surfeit of gold pieces, but we have purchased more items. I would like to go see Shuhuri again before I leave, I think. But also, I want to look out over here. On the north side of the village is a lookout point that offers a spectacular view across the valley below. You stay for a while, watching birdmen circling the peaks across the ravine to the north. One of the hoofborn comes to join you. They are cruel creatures born of pure hate, he remarks. But they say they are nesting in the mountains outside Mampang. Well, all birds make nests. Tell me how birdmen can be defeated, or have you ever been to Mampang? I, if he has, I suspect he won't know much to tell me. But then again, shooting with arrows, you know, fireballs, lightning bolts, that sort of thing. But maybe there's something really special I should know. This is general. This is specific. Tell me how birdmen can be defeated, you ask. Do they have a weakness? A fear of gold, perhaps, the hoofborn replies with a smile. No such luck. Birdmen are as tough as eagles. They barely eat. They can fly, obviously. They can talk to each other, but rarely trouble themselves to talk to other species. And they are fiercely loyal to their master, he shakes his head. No, birdmen must be avoided. There is no other way. Have you ever been to Mampang? You ask, staring at the citadel brooding on the far horizon. The hoofborn nods. We all come from there, he replies. There is no hoofborn born anywhere else. You cannot have children of your own? We cannot. The hoofborn strikes his chest with a palm. Go in peace, stranger. There are some youths playing around in the dirt. They are hairier than their elders. Some are using all four legs. Do they grow into their humanity, or are the younger ones simply more goat-like due to the Archmage's interference? 
Let's go bid farewell to Shahuri. She may have some final words of advice for us. And it's been so long. I apologize if her voice is slightly different. I can't remember exactly. You approach Shahuri, who is seated outside a largish hut, and nod in greeting. Greetings, she declares. I hope you are finding our village comfortable. Uh, thank you. This will be your last respite, I think, she agrees. Shahuri looks away into the distance, and for the first time you notice that her eyes are blurry and weak. Are you blind? Not yet, Shahuri answers, but I lose sight with every passing year. We are all made creatures, but not made to the last. What will your people do? You ask. I am told you cannot have children. Shahuri nods. There is nothing we can do, she replies. We must live as well as we can, and that is all. What can you tell me of the birdmen? You ask. They are cruel creatures, but there is some hope for them, I think, she replies. They are strong, perhaps even strong enough to escape from the Archmage's clutches in the end. You nod and turn to leave. One last thing, Shuhuri declares before you step away. If you should find the Archmage... Yes? Kill him without hesitation. With that, she looks away, her weak eyes searching the distant horizons for answers. This is what she wants. It could actually be a very important warning as well. Let's take our leave of the village. You head for the edge of the village, but Shahuri clip-clops over to you. She is armed now with a long and heavy spear which she levels at you. Is this a combat tutorial? Surely not. Shahuri? Shahuri holds your gaze for a moment, then flips the spear around to lie handle first. The blessed spear, she says. Take it as a thanks. It may help you to penetrate the defences that surround the Archmage. Thank you. I cannot reject such a worthy offer. I do not feel this is a trap. I am deeply honoured. You take the spear and strap it to your back. It feels, as promised, most firmly made. Now go, Shahuri insists, and may the gods of the old world be with you. You turn and take your leave. A guard accompanies you down to the mountain path. You are grateful for it as the route is so steep you risk a fall without help. Now, we had a warning about the groaning bridge, which I suspect is this one, so we may need to go back. Once you're at the road, your guard extends his arms in the hoof-borne bow. Thank you for your news and stories, traveller, but we would appreciate if you did not return. We cannot risk a spy from Mampang following you to discover our home. In that case, you have my word. I clicked it. He smiles, extends his arms again, and disappears up the narrow path once more. Now, what will interest me is if this path now becomes completely unavailable, or if it is available, and going up in it involves either meeting some hoofborn guards who chase us away and say we told you not to come back here, or they could, you know... I'm not going to go back there, but I'd be interested to know what the possible consequences are if it is left open. You skitter and scramble the last few leg lengths down to the trail once more. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. I will not look for the hoofborn path. I gave them my word. 
The path runs in both directions along the chasm's edge. Now, in the original gamebook, there wasn't a massive opportunity for backtracking. Apart from the Z spell being the single largest opportunity for backtracking in any fighting fantasy gamebook ever, apart from Forest of Doom, depending on how you interpret a particular section, Citadel of Chaos, and one other one that lets you go back to the beginning and try again as well. So, this bridge here, uh, it's tricky. Let's go on this way. You walk along the edge of a sharp ledge which looks down into the deep chasm. The gap is wide, but across it you can see a path winding through the mountains towards Mampang Fortress. A rope hangs suspended in mid-air above the chasm. Its near end is coiled up neatly to the path. The sun is sinking and the sky is turning bruise purple. It'll be dark soon, and I will cast a spell. This rope. How? No, I don't want that. I want the... I want how or... The one that's sus, right? Yeah. I'm going to rest soon so I can get some energy back. You wind the stars into order around you. A calm voice speaks into your thoughts. The voice informs you that the rope swing is a trap, but so are the bridges and the path ahead. And then, before it can offer anything more useful, the voice fades from your mind. I'll look down into the chasm. You lean over, looking down the chasm. At the bottom, you can make out a rocky path that winds out of view. It is all but hidden below a layer of fog. I could use my rope ladder here, but I... The thing is, I was given the opportunity to use my rope ladder here as well, and I'd kind of rather do it there. thing is, they want me to come up here. Okay, okay, okay. Is there a way just, like, get in here and then down there, like, rope ladder? I doubt it. Um. You know. Sure, let's go for another spell. Let's throw in a howl. If they are all traps. That would be like, use your rope ladder, you ninny. <laughs> you cast the spell, expecting the calm voice of the enchantment to talk in your ear, but it does not come. Instead, without any explanation, the rope's invisible anchor point seems to evaporate, and the rope plunges away into a ravine and is gone. A counter spell? This is clearly a counterspell. It would seem that the, path of spell, the spell of pathfinding opposes the enchantment of attachment. The how fix counterspell has been recorded in your spellbook. Time to make a move. I keep walking. I do run the risk if I go back and forth too many times along this path of wasting so much time I consume on my rations. The rope was clearly a death trap. You'll leave it behind, walking towards the bridge in the distance. For a moment, you seem to see something moving on the slopes above you. I will look up. You look up, but can see nothing. A hoofborn, perhaps, watching your progress? I'm not going to wave. That would let them know I've seen them. But if they are an enemy, I, pre I, pre I make myself vulnerable waving. Could get shot in the chest or something. I'll look at the bridge ahead. The bridge ahead seems strong and secure. It spans to a path on the far side. This must be the way that travellers of Mam to Mampang look took in past times. There is no reason to waste time here. We shall see about that. Now, if I can cast a spell... This path does continue, though, to the blockage. It's weird. You head along the path until you reach the foot of the sturdy-looking bridge that spans the chasm here. Clouds rumble as they roll across the dimming sky. Soon it'll be dark once more, 
and I shall look at the bridge, which I have been informed is a trap. The bridge is made of plain wood and looks sturdy enough. Here in the dry mountain air it has not even begun to rot. I will test it. You take a probing step, but as your foot touches the planks you hear a strange, quiet sound. It stops when you move your foot, but when you step back onto the bridge the murmur begins again. It is as though the bridge was whispering. Whispering? Time to move on, but will you risk the bridge? Absolutely not! Can I use my rope ladder here on the climbing path, or does it have to be this side of the bridge? You know what? Just for those of you who may not remember. When am I supposed to have a torch marcher? Kalitas? Um, discovered a mention of Kalitas in a scratch message. Oh, have I... Have I got my potion? But hang on. There was a, there was a clue from the... Um, some rumors say the Archmage is long dead. I doubt it. We know about Minimites. Oh. You're given advice. Pay respect to Nagamante, the Torture Master. Um, do not eat from the larder of frog. And in the dark chamber of night, do not light your way with the blood candle. So, in that case... Do I still have my potion of Limbry juice? I don't believe I do. I serve the mystery potion, which I wasn't able to use when I had to use the potion of Limbry juice. I'm going back to here. You follow the mountain ledge. From somewhere above you hear a calling voice. There is no reason to waste time here. I want to... Fine, I'll go here then. You return to the edge of the chasm. Darkness closes in. You need to rest. You cannot reach the bottom of the chasm with your rope ladder, but you do spy a small outcropping part way down which you could reach. As I suspected, but maybe somewhere up here... I can use it. Um. Let's go for it and hope I don't really resist. I don't really regret this. You affix your rope ladder to a sturdy rock and climb down. At the end of the ladder, the valley floor is another ten feet below. Can I just, like, cast a spell? You know, that would be really sensible. Um. I'll climb back up. You begin to ascend. Just then, a goblin wearing a long blonde wig pokes his head over the cliff edge above. Looking down, he is backlit by the sun. Well, what a good day I'm having, he says in a voice like scraping metal. Who are you? You ask. I am the lucky one, he laughs. Not only will the guards reward me for killing you, a stranger, but I will have this nice ladder to sell. He scratches his chin and then burps. Now, how best to kill you? Do I have any arrows left? He begins to rummage in his pack and I will cast a spell. How stupid is he? Would a law spell be? No L available. Four. Yeah, that works, that works, that works. I could just drift down to his chagrin. But what other options? Nif? Nip? No. No, no, no. No nif? Okay. Nap. Yeah, I haven't done that before. I could make him sleepy. Uh, Zen? Again, then I, then I could even float up and rise up to meet him. Zap, I could just lightning bolt the little bugger. 
Uh, hot, obviously. NZHF. Um. I mean, the short range teleportation. Seems reasonably sensible. But I'd kind of like to keep my ladder. So I think I want to make him sleepy. Um, nap? Time for nap time, little goblin. Oh, well, I should wake up pretty soon. You craft the spell, but the goblin disappears as you do so, and the spell turns on you. Yeah, I thought he might, as he turned around away from the cliff edge. You doze off and your grip loosens. You fall and go ow, and hopefully wake up. You land on a ledge halfway to a ravine floor, hopefully the one I climbed down to. The goblin frowns. Are you dead? You're not, are you? It grumbles. Well then, well, well. And with that, he begins to pull up the ladder. Okay, I'll cast another spell. Well, I tried. Okay, zip or zen? I mean, if... Zip is random direction, isn't it? As in, you don't control where you arrive. Enables the caster to teleport a short distance. Transportation can occur through soft materials such as wood and clay, but not through stone or metal. Is somewhat unreliable and can have disastrous results. In which case, fall to float down, but he's stealing my ladder. I think, however, once I've descended into here, I'm supposed to not have the ladder anymore. But even so, Zen makes sense. And it's free, whereas Fall is not. Game on you. Reaching up to the stars, you create the magic, and the medallion begins to glow as you rise gently up into the air. Call that a spell? He scoffs. He finishes bundling up the ladder. The goblin tucks the rope ladder under his arm, this arm and disappears. You can hear him chuckling as he departs. With the goblin away, you are left alone on the bare ledge. There is nothing here beside the wind. The cavern stretches away down to ravine of some kind. You can see a trail leading further into it. The climb down would be long, which would be risky. Yeah, but I'm flying. You float downwards until your feet touch the grass below. Safely on the ground, you examine your surroundings. That goblin began to feel like a almost every option will lead to the same result kind of situation. Which always feels lazy. Uh, it feels like a, like a certain plot point, a storyline has to be reached maybe. Here we go. You bob gently near the ground. You are shaken, but unhurt. You are in the narrow ravine once more. And once more, you are somehow still alive. Your weight returns and you settle gently back down to the ground. I'll look at the walls of the ravine. As it opens up, it will cease to be a ravine and become more of a chasm. Because a ravine, like a crevasse, is kind of narrowish. But a crevasse is deeper and a ravine is more like a sort of valley or gully as well, like a really narrow, kind of like a hollow fjord with no water in it. You go over to the walls of a ravine. They are worn and weathered with several cracks and weathered pockmarks. You can try to climb, though the incline is sheer. Not going to try to climb, but I will have a search around in case there's anything useful to find. Looking around, you notice scattered among the rock a few rooten 
root rotten boots, dented breastplates and other abandoned gear. Where did all this come from? Well, clearly lots of people have fallen down here and died in the past, or walked down here and died. They were probably dropped here by the Birdmen, now that I think of it. So, to, I was going to say, I don't imagine the Birdmen are going to look down in here very much. Um, they'll be looking more at the higher raised areas, but actually, if they use this as a dumping ground, then maybe not. I'll keep digging around to see if I can find anything really useful before it gets dark and I need to rest. After shifting a few rocks and pebbles, you discover the answer. The ravine is peppered with the smashed bones of adventurers who did not survive the fall from the bridges overhead. You are not the first to attempt the journey to Mampang. Has anyone ever succeeded? Well, yes, because loads of people have got in there, and I'm going to make a move. But you cannot stay here. You must find a way back up the slopes to continue your journey. There's a blatant path over this way, so towards it I shall go. I could try and get out at this end, but that goblin stole my rope ladder. I have a horrible feeling that... that right, the goblin didn't feel like an original adventure character. He felt like a character added by the Tin Man games as a way of removing the rope ladder if you ever used it to come down into here. He had the same feel as the the little girls in the village with the dog and the, the little girl ghost who'd lost her parents and yeah but it, it had that slightly more modern feel to it. You climb down the rocks and the grass begins to take over. The moon leaves slow, moves slowly across the dark sky. I could sleep here. I should sleep here. Well, I should sleep, but not here. But I should sleep. Settling down your pack, you try to stretch out despite the cold. At least you have eaten already today, so you do not need to eat again to avoid hunger. You lie back and try to forget your troubles. You wake in the night to see a black shadow slipping into the gloom beside you. I will draw my sword. You slide your sword from its scabbard as silently as you can, because if it rasps with a great big shing, it actually means that you are dragging the edge of the blade against the cap of the scabbard and blunting your sword. It basically means you're pulling it out in a hurry and don't know what you're doing. It sounds really dramatic, but it means you don't know how to use a sword very well, or are so emotionally overwrought that you're doing so badly. No need for that, Annalander, and not with my own blade. Oh! Wait a minute, it's Flanker! No need for that, Annalander, and not with my own blade. The shape slips down onto the ground slips down onto the ground beside you. I'll make space for him. You make a space for him to cl for close by your side. It is a cold night here, in the shadow of the evil, the voice continues. Hang on, hang on, hang on, because some it's kind of a flanker, he speaks a bit like this. Yes, and it Yeah, yeah. Flanker? I near the end of my journey, as you near the end of yours, Flanker replies. But, Annalanda, I fear the outcome. Is your mission to thwart me? What, you've helped me so far. What is your mission? It does not do to speak of it. Flanker's head moves a fraction in the dark. I am a dead man still alive. An assassin is not permitted to experience mercy. And yet here I am. Will you murder me in the dark? Not this dark right here and now, but at some point in the future. Never, he touches your shoulder briefly. If I murder you, it will be before your open eyes. Rest now, and I shall sleep. And so the night passes, but you know that in the morning he will be gone. During the past day, you gained considerable stamina, 11 whole points, gained some provisions, and lost a large amount of gold, 30 whole pieces. 
explored the peaks and ravines of the Zanzunus, and found two new clues. The Archmage remains unaware of you, except for that goblin who said he was going to tell all the Archmage's guards that I was coming, which I suspect was more banter and less... As in, like, the goblin was inevitable and not a lot I could do about it, really. You pick yourself to your feet. You've been walking these paths in circles for days now. Time to make progress, surely. Hey! I literally just, like, you know, walked up here, along here, to there. And, okay, I did go to there, then I came back. I didn't. I haven't been... You know, here for ages. Come on, surely now. The ravine widens a little here. That's it. Fine. Seems to be going upwards now, not downwards. You follow the ravine downhill. You think you are still headed in the direction of Mampang, but it is hard to tell so low down. As you travel, the rock slopes begin to weaven out, becoming a valley peppered with clumps of grass and shrubs. The early morning sun makes the air glow. And I will look around. You look around the rocks, but come across nothing useful. In the valley? It's very Welsh now, isn't it? After a morning of dusty walking, you arrive at a cluster of trees of a sparse, spiny type. A sparse, spiny type that seems to dot the area of high salmon. It would be a quiet spot to rest. The air moves a little around you, still icy but fresh. Do I eat? This is a spot to stop and eat. Something might happen while I'm eating. I could watch. You eat one of your smoked fish and feel much better for it. The valley continues straight ahead, dipping down out of sight. To your right is a path leading up the far rock slope. The valley continues in both directions and a track leads upwards. Well, I'm going up. If I go this way, I might find something dead end, more dead bodies under this bridge... I'm going to meander up this path because this thing looks interesting. This sort of ruined tower. You climb the path which soon steepens. You need to keep one hand on the rock wall to keep steady. It climbs then sharply turns up the mountain. You keep climbing, vaulting borders and grabbing tree roots. Up ahead you make out the top of a stone tower. Could be a guard tower, but I have little choice but to approach it. The path crests a rise as you climb. A tower sits a short distance off the path. It looks to be in ruins, in which case I'm absolutely going to search it. Why? Because the tower presents cover, visual cover, from the birdmen of Xamon. So they might not be able to see me so much with those bits of walls and maybe even part of a broken roof for me to hide behind. And while I won't necessarily be going out of my way to conceal myself, it's it's minor situational cover, you know. I will look up at the tower. The tower is familiar, built to a similar design as the ones you saw in the backlands, but this one has fallen into semi-ruin. The entire top half is missing, as though struck through by a blade. An interesting description. Perhaps another tower shone its beacon upon it and destroyed the top half. I will approach. As you move towards the tower entrance, a shadow falls across the doorway. The shape is stooped and hideous. It would seem this place is home to a troll. It has not yet noticed you. I will watch. You watch the creature as it paces around inside the ruined tower. It appears to be ordering things, moving stone blocks from one point to another. It might have some treasure. And it's literally a troll by a bridge. I am not one of the free billy goats gruff, but I could fireball it. 
You march over, and a troll's eyes snap up to meet yours. Then he lumbers out into the daylight. I'll look him over. He stands at least a head taller than you, and his shoulders fill the exit. The troll roars and bangs his massive sword against a shield large enough to squash you with. He is a ferocious enemy of incredible strength, and I will cast a spell. Six would be great. I'm not sure I can. Right, let's see. I could pop a rock. Yeah. Counters, counters, counters. I could sharpen up a... What's this? Talk in all languages. Oh! I mean, with that roaring, I get the feeling talk is not going to be the most helpful. Um, I think he's already pretty stupid as a troll. Mud. Oh! I make quicksand in the door of the tower, have him sink into it and die, and then like dispel the quicksand, and he's just like stuck on the ground. Um, could make him depressed. Yeah, that might work well. Um, fourth, fourth, mm -hmm. he's outside the door already, so less useful because I could put it in the doorway. Uh, zap or zip. There's so many decisions. I think, however, um, sharpening my weapon or making him really depressed. Uh, Dim is stupid, isn't it? So, sap. Yeah? Yeah. You weave the constellations into a pattern around you, and, your s and the sluggish troll slows down even more. He should be easier to fight now. So that's made him depressed, not clumsy, right? Um, what does Raz require? It's for beeswax, isn't it? Right? And he is depressed, so he should be a easier foe to deal with. Yes. Uh, doesn't counter anything yet. I will... Hmm. Huh. I'll go for it. You draw the assassin's sword from your belt as the troll approaches and you set your stance. Not the blessed spear, then. Um... I'm going to go like a six. Oh, man, he defended. Oh, that is an insane amount of health. I should have gone for like a, an attack spell against him. The troll slopes forward. Then, while still a sword's length away, from, he drops down behind into a sulky crouch behind his little, thick little shield. You swing hard, but it does little good. He begins screaming and shouting. Okay, he's getting angry. He's getting psyched up. I can go all in or defend here. I'm going to defend. I'm glad I did. You drop into a defensive stance. The troll tries to wear you down, but you turn his blow aside. You adjust your grip and square your shoulders. He's used a lot of energy, so he's likely to be just defending. Yes. Maybe three rounds, two or three recovering. He stops to brush tears from his eyes, and you size, seize the moment to strike. Reaching down, you toss a handful of dirt into his eyes and cut him as he staggers. He reacts as best he can muster, ducking. The troll starts screaming and cursing at you. Well, time to defend again. Or go hard. Let's go hard. Yeah. You keep up the pressure and attack with precision and strength. His own half-hearted swing is knocked away. The troll staggers and falls. He narrows his eyes. I'll defend, because I think he will too. He's building up his energy again. You drop back. The troll circles around you, his shield high. His shield twitches, which means he's coming in for an attack or something. Yeah, let's defend again. Oh! <laughs> you keep your guard up. The troll cowers behind his shield. He looks down at the ground. He's not going to sweep for my legs. He's not thinking of protecting his legs. He's just depressed. Let's go for a minor attack. 
You spy an opening and go for the attack. You cut him as he tries to turn. He whines as he brings up his sword. The troll begins yelling and gnashing his teeth. He is taking a long time preparing his attack, so I can just delay, regain my attack power while he's de de delaying his, and I just go all in. You batter at his blade and rear back and bring your sword down on his head. His weeping turns to a cry of pain as your blow lands. The troll is stumbling, his wiry old muscles leaking green blood. The troll's shield rises. I'm going to defend. Defend two or three times of an attack, right? You shift into a crouch. The troll paces at you, stamping and clawing at the ground. He scuffs at the ground with his sword. He's getting worked up. Um, sure, all or nothing, right? Oh, what a waste. You seize the moment to strike and swing with terrible might. He reacts as best he can, as best as he can muster, ducking. You knock chips from his shield. The troll stamps back and I defend like hell. Ooh, a weak attack. Interesting. You drop back as the troll makes a light attack. You knock it away. You watch his eyes carefully for his next move. His shield lifts up. I will def go for about a two. Yeah. You seize a moment when his guard is down and charge forward. You cut him as he stumbles over his feet. He whines as he brings up his sword. The troll stamps at the ground and curses in an unknown tongue. I wonder if I'd actually cast the language spell if I would have understood this, or if it would have just been like prior to the combat. The troll shifts his grip on his sword. Uh, that's a pretty that's bigger than his average 6.5, so sure. I don't think he can go that high. You are easily the better swordsman, and draw back and bring your blade swinging across his chest. You swing, spinning around on the spot, and the last cut slices through the troll's neck. Two stamina lost. Skilled swordplay. I'll take it. Um, when this game does get released as a whole complete game, admittedly on consoles, but hopefully it comes to PC as a full complete game as well, I would love there to be a hardcore difficulty option where you were not allowed to repeat a fight, where the try again option was removed at the end of fights. Um, that's not saying the rewind option should be completely removed as well, but just like a hardcore combat difficulty option. You get to your feet and gather your wits. The troll is quite dead and I'm going to search him for his stuff. You quickly search for Troll's body, finding nothing but a charm around his neck. A goblin's tooth strung onto a string. I'll take it. You tug the tooth away, snapping the string. The path continues in both directions and the tower is open to you. Into the tower I shall go. The fight with the Troll has made a lot of noise. If anyone comes here to investigate, I want to be out of sight when they come. The lack of a troll may be suspicious if a troll doesn't come out and bellow at them and shake his sword and so on, but you step between the fallen blocks of the ruined tower. It stinks. Yes, it stinks of troll. You pause and look around the broken, shattered room. It was a fine building once. There are hints of carvings and decorations on the stonework, even though all of it has now tumbled away and the tower is open to the elements. Niches set into the walls once held idols and statues, and a curving spiral staircase once climbed upwards, but it is now broken halfway. Uh, niches and walls can be niches, but but finding your niche in society or finding you know, finding your niche that is not a niche. I will absolutely search for ruins. I don't see much point climbing the broken staircase. Unless it's so I can see something from there, like a vantage point. Or be seen by birdmen. Yeah, let's not do that. You search around the ruins and come across something black under a stone. It is a folded cloth, and I will pull it free. Can't I just lift the stone out on top of it? You pull it free. The cloth is thick and heavy, but has been neatly folded into a square. Mirror? The mirror spell, the, the, the spell, the, the, the mirror I need for one of the spells, the bronze mirror, whatever it is. There is something bulky inside which you can feel through the cloth, but whatever it is, it is not heavy. I'm not going to shake it out. If it's a mirror, it could break. You unwrap the cloth. In the centre of it is a short length of knotted rope. 
open out the black cloth. You open the black cloth out fully. It has two loose sleeves and a heavy hood. After a moment, you realise what it is. It is the habit of a monk, and the knotted rope is a belt. Hmm. A disguise. It seems to be one piece and free of moth holes. You could try it. I hope it's not a curse, and I hope it doesn't mark me. But yeah, let's, let's do it. You gather up the monk's concealing habit and quickly pull it, pull it on. Oh, oh! <laughs> you will now pass as a monk. You step away from the ruin once more. A monk climbing a flight of broken stairs would be suspicious. It's not the kind of thing a monastic individual would do. He would ponder and think and maybe, maybe meditate a little. But he wouldn't go willy-nilly climbing an obviously broken staircase, but for that would be folly. And I need to maintain my cover here for now. You're back outside the tower. You can smell the troll's corpse even from this distance. The path continues in both directions and the tower is open to you. I could go back down into the valley. Why would I want to fully explore the valley? What am I likely to find there that will help me get to the Archmage? I think I need to not venture down into the alley, into the valley, but continue on up to this path. You climb up onto the cliff path. As the sun climbs towards its zenith, the wind picks up a little. The path splits here, snaking around the edge of a mountain while the, a branch works its way downwards towards the stone tower. I will look westwards. Looking west, you see the end of a narrow wooden bridge. There are three ways to go from here. There are indeed. This looks like a location I would like to visit. Yeah. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? <laughs> you follow the path westward, away from Mampang. A narrow rope bridge leads south across the ravine from here. Yep, not even going across it. You've been walking these paths in circles for days now. Time to make progress, surely. Hey, it's not been that long. You follow the path as it curves around the slope of a collapsed mountain, picking your way over fallen stones and tumbled boulders. This was clearly a major road once, but it has long since fallen into ruin. The middle of the day is hot, rather like the weather we've been having in these parts recently. Look, stop game. Look, if he thought I was coming, maybe now he's thinking I won't, you know. You follow the, tra the trail around the mountainside. Finally, the road ends outside a ruined building. The path beyond the building is nothing more but rock and ruin, but the building itself is something I would like to enter. Maybe I'll even get a little mini-map for it. You approach the door of the building. It is not locked, but the frame has warped, and now the door is stuck open by a mere crack. Is stuck open by a mere crack. I will peer through that crack. You peer through the crack into the dusty darkness beyond, expecting a spear point to be thrust into your eyeball. This place is clearly long abandoned. I'll look over the building. No need to waste a spell just yet. You lean back from the doorway and look over the structure. The building is two floors high, with a tiled roof and has partially fallen in. Its main door is small and set between large bottle glass windows. This was clearly a grand house once. A small metal bracket sticks out from the wall above the door. Perhaps it once held a sign, perhaps an inn sign, but if it's a fancy building, maybe not an inn. Right. It would make sense for this to be an inn, right? You know, you, people would venture up the steep mountain paths, cross one of the bridges, and come stop off here to rest before continuing their journey upwards. If I pull the door open, will the building collapse? I don't think I want to waste a... 
energy on a spell just yet. I'll pull the door open. You slip your fingers into the crack into the door and try to haul it open, but the door is firmly wedged between the bent frame and the earth below. It will not shift as much as an inch, in which case I will not potentially break a weapon or damage a weapon trying to get this open. I will cast a spell. Zip would be great. Zip is not available. J and nothing? Come on, J, J is here. It's right here. You give me a J spell and there's no, no, no follow-up. Why do you even... Hmm. Six. Hmm. Wait, but the clones are illusion, illusory, right? They don't... They don't exert physical force. I'm not going to burn the building down. Or burn the door. Dop. I could try it. You cast the enchantment, but the spell cannot seem to find purchase on the door. It seems the hinges have seized and rusted so badly the spell no longer recognises this opening as a door at all. Okay, so can I make myself really small and squeeze through? Um, let's take a moment to try to be creative, right? This spell is cast onto the caster's own body and creates multiple images of the caster, yet yeah, all capable of casting spells and attacking. Each will perform identical actions, and most creatures will be unable to tell which is the real figure. Yes, but how would that... So it is an illusion, illusory image. I don't see how it's going to help open the door. But I want to know how it would help open the door. <laughs> it just feels like... The description there is misleading, isn't it? Because it says creates copies. It doesn't remind you, hey, you know. So I think if I tried to use that spell, I would be informed, yeah, you create an illusory copy of yours and, and make the action to open the door. And it makes the action to open the door and doesn't do it because it's an illusion. No, no, how? Huff. Yeah, I could blow my gale horn. I like that. <laughs> Looking to the constellations overhead, you craft the spell, lifting the gale horn, and blow a loud note. A powerful wind gathers as you play the horn, but it serves only to slam the door more firmly shut. Couldn't I have directed the... Okay, fine. The magical wind fades away once more. I'm not gonna... Right, fine. Door. I hope I don't cause massive structural damage. This feels far too easy, but let's go for it. You turn the starlight into alignment around you, winding a fireball in your palm, and blast that door. Then you hurl the fireball at the tavern door, and it explodes into charged fragments, as I suspected a tavern. Yeah. Dust and stale air drifts out of the dim exterior interior of the building through the doorway. Which way now? Well, I will venture inside. But I'm going to do that in the very next episode. I hope you've all enjoyed this one. I know it's been far too long coming. And I do look forward to seeing you all in the very next one. I'm going to say goodbye for now though and cheerio everyone. See you all next time.